Praise the Lord. So I have to continue. Sorry for the sudden disruption. I will call that one part one. Let's call this one part two. Trust in the Lord. That was the topic of the message. At the beginning, I did mention about the so-called, so many things that have happened or that are happening in our society. And the need for us to trust in the Lord. If you trust in man, you trust in government. You will always have sadness. So don't trust in man. Trust in the Lord. It's only the Lord that can provide the need that we are talking about. It's only the Lord that can raise people at his own time for him for them to do what we want for us. All we need to do is seek first the kingdom of God. Let us cling to the Lord. By the time we cling unto the Lord, there is no doubt God himself in his own way will attend to us in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. So let's look at a few passages in the Bible that talk about uh, trusting in the Lord. Amen. 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 The book of Proverbs chapter 3 verse 5 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. I think what is happening is enough for us now to understand that it is not by might, it is not by power, but by the Spirit, says the Lord. We are having this disappointments because we have so trusted in our leaders thinking that they would be the one that will emancipate us far from it if we lie let us continue to vote forever unless God himself gives room for them to perform they will continue to fail us in quick succession and that will not be our portion in the mighty name of Jesus Amen, Amen. Amen. then so we should trust the Lord with the whole of our heart and do not lean on our own understanding. When we take the laws into our hands and thinking that that will bring about the solution, look at what has happened. We trusted that, okay, if we protest, that the government will respond. And look at the response. Instead of responding positively, they started killing our youth. Very sad. Double tragedy. Expectation failed. Then let's look at the book of Psalm, chapter 46, verse 10, says, Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among all nations. I will be exalted in the earth. One thing that God does not compromise is this. He does not compromise giving his glory to man. We are looking for the government that will take the glory that, oh, it was during the administration of so-so-so -so person that, ah, Nigeria became whatever. And we can see what we are getting. Until God himself says yes, no man can do it. So let us trust in the Lord and do the bit we can. Trusting in the Lord does not mean that we shouldn't work. It doesn't mean that we shouldn't vote. It doesn't mean that we shouldn't vote. Let's not trust that it is the leadership that will do it for us. Because if we trust that it is the leadership that will do it for us, as we are, as we are being failed all the time, so we will, be, we will be experiencing failure. And it will not do us well. We will be protesting all the time. That will not be our portion again in Jesus' name. God himself will give our leadership <coughs> the opportunity, the grace, to be able to address the community issues in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Then Psalm 28 verse 7 says, The Lord is my strength and shield. In him my heart trusts. And I am helped by, I am helped. My heart exalts. And with my song, I will give thanks. In the first place, let us appreciate God for where we are in this country. But let us trust that it is the Lord alone that can do what we want for us without fail. Matthew 6, 25 says, Therefore, I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, or about your body, 
what you will put on is not life more than food and the body more than clothes. Brethren, we need to understand this life is not about bread and butter. We can eat so that we can live. But life is not about living to eat. Not about living to eat. When we are using wrong values, wrong parameters to measure, your own gear sticks as to measure our goals, then we are in trouble. Yes, that good education is good. Good, good no road networks, everything, they are all good. And God will take us to that level. Because it's happening elsewhere, it will happen here again in Jesus' name. But let us put God first. Let all of us attach ourselves to God and trust in Him. Give Him thanks for the ones He has done. Do not destroy that which he has already done, as our ancestors people are doing. God will forgive them. And uh, you see, the little we have again, we say we don't have, and the little we have, we are destroyed. And then we will go back again, refixing those ones. When are we going to make progress? So let's trust in the Lord and pray for our leaders also, that God himself will enable them to do what he purposes for us, that will give us peace. Psalm 9 verse 10 says, And those who know your name put their trust in you, for you, O Lord, have not forsaken those who seek you. Those who seek the Lord, the Lord does not forsake them. I am one of such people. I've always said, said this. It is not by much. It's not by anything. God himself is the one that I just depend upon. And he has never failed me. So as a nation, as our youths, as youths, we need to trust upon the Lord. And the Lord himself will take us to the promised land. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Hebrew 13 verse 8 says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. We have to trust. Jesus said in the book of John 10, 10, that the thief has come to steal, to kill, and to destroy but the Son of Man has come to give life and to give it abundantly. You see, Jesus is the one that promises that. And that Jesus we've left alone. That's it. If we don't trust in the Lord, in the ability of Jesus to do it for us, then we'll go our own way and we'll discover that we are missing it. So our expectations may always fail. So please, let all of us identify with Christ so that we can get what we want. Then the book of Romans 8.28 says, And we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good, for those who are called according to his purpose. If you are called according to the purpose of God, it is from your love for him that you know Matthew 22. If you read that passage, you hear what Jesus said. The summary of the Bible from Genesis to Revelation is love your God with the whole of your might. And then the second one is love your neighbor as yourself. If we obey these rules, there is no doubt that God will not answer our prayers. So let us trust in him and not in our own mind. Um, Psalm 11, 112 verse 7 says, He is not afraid of bad news. His heart is firm, trusting in the Lord. We've been hearing of COVID-19. We've been hearing of NSAS disasters. We've been hearing of all sorts of calamity, storms, and um, uh, what floods, and all this. All these negative things. We've been hearing of them. But those who trust in the Lord, they are unmoved. They are like trees planted by the riverside. Psalm 100, verse 1. They are like trees planted by the riverside that blossoms all the time and releases its fruits at still time. Because when you have the Lord, you see that all this bad news will not shake you. Because you trust in the Lord that he will keep you and he will provide for you. Let us trust in the Lord. The Lord will be with us in Jesus' name. Mark 5, 36 says, But overhearing what they said, Jesus said to the ruler of the synagogues, Do not fear them. Only believe. Believe in the Lord. Do not fear what anybody will say. Trust in Him. Once you trust in the Lord, your prayers will be answered. 
Isaiah 26 verse 3 says, You keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on you, because he trusts in you. Let your mind stay in Christ, not in Buhari, not in Oshibadi, not in Tinubu, not in any leader. Let your heart stay in Christ and be loved and trust in him. It is then we can have the peace that we are looking for. The Lord says, our body, our life is worth more than bread and butter. It's worth more than the things we are cl clamoring for. And again, the second part of all this, apart from trusting in the Lord, is do the bit that the Lord has asked you to do. Deuteronomy 28 from verse uh, 10 to 14. Read it. Say, I will make you head, not the tail. It says, I will send the rains at the right time. You will be head and not be tail. Excuse me. You will be head and not tail. And you will be a lender to nations. So these are the promises of abundance God has promised us. If we, we Then we should not be lazy. I'm still saying it. If we like, we can protest here tomorrow. It still boils down that you, as a youth, you have to be creative. If you are not creative, even if the government is raining down money, you will discover that your life will remain the same. So let us all work hard. God wants us to work. Be creative. Don't let uh, the challenges you have be uh, that your reaction to it will be to become a criminal or to become problematic for the society or for others. What gain do you have when you are destroying other people's hard-earned properties. The various supermarkets that have been robbed, what gain? And those people now, they will think twice before they continue in business. Because you can come at any day and clear everything. People are justifying that so they the COVID-19 palliating that are taking belongs to people. Yes, but they are not supposed to be stolen. Why not allow the government itself to carry its own guilt, its own sin upon its head? So when there is a chaos, things like that will happen. But people know where these things are. Why didn't we cry out and say, give us the palliatives that are hidden because we are hungry. We break into everywhere. We are burning filling stations. We are doing all sorts of things. That's not good. We don't trust in God. We trust in our ability to do it ourselves. And God does not want that. God will forgive us in the mighty name of Jesus. So, above all, trust in the Lord in whatever you do, and your ways shall prosper. Shall we please make it arise? Our Father and our God, we just want to thank you again. Thank you for answers. Thank you for COVID-19. Thank you for the floods. Thank you for everything that has happened, because we know even though they, they are negative, for us who trust in you, it is, you are bringing something positive out of it. Be thou exalted in Jesus' name. Amen. We pray for the youths of this nation. Oh Lord God Almighty, meet them at the point of their needs. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Even with the adults, meet us at the point of our needs. Amen. Uh, our leadership, oh Lord, give them the wisdom, the zeal, and the way with that, the resources, to be able to tackle the basic needs of the commoners and everybody in this society in the mighty Amen. name of Jesus. At the end of the day, Father, take glory for everything Amen. in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Blessed be to your name. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. As we said, kindly share this message. The Lord will bless you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Remember also to subscribe. God bless you. See you next time.